Hi guys, here is the video I promised showing how to make your own Erin Condren Life Planner labels. Um, this is uh, to show you how to make the labels with the text inside and also the color filling in the entire label as well. So um, I'm going to open up, I have two things open up right now. I have a new program, sorry, a new document inside this uh, Silhouette Studio. And then I also created a document in the Silhouette called label sizes and this are uh, this just has some of the most common labels that I've been making lately um, this first one this is the size that would come with your life planner it's one and a half inches wide by half an inch tall um, this one is similar to the Avery labels I was making before so it's three quarters of an inch wide by half an inch tall and I use this for my um, monthly view for the bill pay, bill pay and the paydays as well and then I also like to see my paydays on a weekly basis. So this is the one and a half inch wide by a quarter inch tall uh, labels that you can put directly into your weekly view. I put it right below the actual numbers and right above the word uh, morning. So um, then these are quarter inch circles. This is a half inch circle. And then this is three quarters of an inch circle. And I use these the most when I'm making labels. Um, I'll make another video for creating some stickers later on. But right now I just want you guys to see the label making part um, so I can show you how I made those labels I posted on Facebook earlier. Um, down here is a label. I have a Etsy shop um, so when I send out stickers I want to be able to have something that shows that this was my work and that I made it so my Etsy is Ruby Doobies um, so that's something I can copy and paste in the future as well. So the new document, let's zoom in a little bit. I'm gonna make this video assuming that you guys have some um, background with a silhouette so I'm not going to talk a whole lot about registration marks or anything like that. We'll put them on right now just so you guys can see how it works. Um, some people have more success with these being smaller, some have more success with them being larger. Um, that's kind of up to your computer and the way that your silhouette works for you. It does not matter right now for what I'm going to show you because you guys can mess with this part later. Um, so let's go and copy. Well, we're going we're gonna to make a label of this size right here. So I'm just going to select it and copy, control C, control V, or command C, command V if you're on a Mac like I am. And we have our label over here. So the first thing we're going to do, you can have it snap to the grid. Um, sometimes it's helpful, sometimes it's not. Um, that's right up here, snap to the grid. I don't have it on right now. Um, the first thing that we're going to do, I'm going to show you guys a little um, thing about making these rounded corners as well. When you make a label that's, uh, you know, a decent size like this, the corners look nice and rounded. It still looks nice and sharp. When you make a small, only a quarter inch or so tall label that's kind of wide, you have a really kind of awkward corner here that's pinched off. And I don't like the look of that as much as I like the look of this corner. So what you can do is get your select tool and you just kind of adjust these little red dots and you can get it back to more of a square corner if you like. And I like the look of that much better. So you can adjust that for your labels as you see fit. We don't need that one right now. But that's just kind of a side note um, for that. We'll get rid of this label here too. We don't need that. So then what you're going to do is you're going to make some text for your label. Let's say we're celebrating a birthday. Century. So they use Century Gothic, I believe, for the labels for Erin Condren. So just for consistency, we'll use Century Gothic. And then you're going to want to start. I usually start out with like a 12-point font and then go up from there. And click on here, birthday. Okay. Now, this is a really important step. Um, you're going to highlight your text and then you're going to come over to your cut settings and you're going to click no cut. We do not want this text to be cut out when we are um, sending it through the silhouette. You want the actual label itself to be cut out, but we don't want these letters to be cut out. So you want these to be set to no cut. Then you're going to come back. We're going to work on our fill colors. Um, because we're going to be creating a, a box behind the actual labels full of color, we want this label here to be no fill, which it is. And then we want the words here to be a white color so that they show up. Okay. So then you're going to move this on top of the label here. And we're going to probably make it a little bit bigger. 
Um, you can make it as big or as small as you want. I'm going to make it really big so that you guys can kind of see everything that's going on. And then this is very helpful. Um, if you, I found this out the hard way when I was pulling my hair out trying to get the words centered on the label. If you highlight everything, the label and the lettering, and then come down to, wait, wait it's over here, uh, this right here. So you open the align window. If you click the word center, it centers the lettering top to bottom, left to right, so that you don't have to be messing with trying to get that perfectly in the middle. If you want it to align the left side, you can click that. If you want to align on the right, you can click that. If you just want it in the middle, you can click center. Another thing I do to kind of help me keep everything together is you highlight the label and the words again, and then you're gonna come down here to the bottom left and click group selected shapes, and you're gonna click that, and it's gonna make your label uh, move as one, which is helpful. Um, sometimes it's not helpful if you want to separate these two things again, you're just going to come back here and click ungroup selected shapes and it'll make it so that you can move. Sometimes it's hard to select the lettering inside, but you can move the word birthday again. So I'm going to put everything back together, center it, and then I'm going to group them together. So I'm going to move this back up here. Then you're going to want to use your replicate button and we're going to replicate right right and then we're going to replicate that group below below we'll just do a few here uh, then the next part to give it some color we're going to create another box and you can just go just barely to the outside and give yourself a little bit of space select this move it around a little bit um, you want to give yourself just a little bit of a buffer around the top and the bottom the left and the right and we're going to fill that with some color. Let's do turquoise is my favorite color. So I know this looks a little scary, but what we're going to do, first of all, before we forget, we're going to go to the cut tool here. We do not want this outside box here to cut. I made that mistake before. You just want your label shapes on the inside to be cut by the machine. Um, I thought everything was going great. It was cutting out the labels like it should, and then all of a sudden it pulled everything back in and went, all the way around the outside it's just a waste of time so you set this box to not get cut out and then you're going to come down to this sorry let's get out of this part um, select your color box and you're going to come down to here where it says send to back or send bring to front so we're going to send that color box to the back so that we can still see our labels right here and that makes it so that um, the color is laying behind the actual labels here. So let's get back to working on the screen. All right, so here you go. You can see you have the turquoise color, you have the cut lines for the labels, and then you have the word birthday inside here. So before I actually go to print anything, I will hit Command or Control P. And then before I waste any ink, printing it off and looking at it. I usually open it as a PDF in preview, and this might take a little bit of time to open up, but it's going to allow us to take a look at what our actual labels are going to look like when they print out. So this is what it's supposed to look like. You're going to print off a bunch of these boxes like this, and then you're going to send it through your silhouette, and because you have these labels set to cut, check out our cut settings. There we go. So these individual labels are set to cut, the words are not set to cut, and then the outside box is not set to cut. When you send this through the machine, it's going to make cuts all around the outside here, okay? And by extending this color box past these actual labels, you're going to ensure that all of these labels get filled in. If you just fill in the labels themselves, which I did the first time, you're probably going to get a little tiny hairline of white around the inside or outside of your labels, and we don't want that. We want them to be completely full of color, okay? So then after that, you're just going to print it, and then my portrait's not connected right now, but you're going to print it, and then you're going to send it through your machine, and you should be good to go. So if you guys have any questions, feel free to comment below. If you'd like to see another video, comment as well, and hopefully I can help you guys uh, get through it. Like I said, I'm still pretty new to the silhouette, but I've figured it out pretty quickly. So uh, let me know what you guys think. I'd love to hear your feedback, and I will talk to you later.